Dennis. Hi, Derek. You back to the West Indies, obviously, 74, 262 not out. Batting for nine and a half hours. How do you actually pace yourself in a situation like that? Because you're enjoying it so much, Derek, I think that uh, um, you just uh, you, you just carry on. Obviously, you need a lot of water uh, to hydrate yourself, but uh, uh, constant. I was in, I was just so enjoying it, uh, and uh, the bowlers change. You've got to think about what they're trying to do and, and that sort of thing. But uh, I, you know, I had, I had your moments, had your bit of luck, um, but uh, it was. Uh, it was just a fantastic wicket. And I knew that if we could get going, save the match uh, for England, having lost the first one, then we've got a chance of keeping the series alive. To have lost that one, we'd have gone 2-0 down. And uh, in a five-test match series, that's, uh, that's a difficult place to come back from. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Dennis. I'm going to ask Peter West to ask the next question, please. Peter, can you go ahead? I think you've unmuted yourself. No. Maybe David Whittingham. David, are you there to ask, ask your question? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, David. Good afternoon, everybody, and good afternoon, Dennis. Hi, David. Okay, trust uh, everyone is keeping well. Um, yeah, the, the question I put in the chat, Dennis, was uh, what are your thoughts on the uh, DR, DRS system um, in the game now? And perhaps my set supplementary question is a little bit tongue-in-cheek. Um, are you glad that it wasn't part of the game when you played? <laughs> well, there's lots, there's lots of times I thought I wasn't out when I was out, so uh, uh, you take the good with the bad. I think it's improved the game. I think it's part of the game. I think the crowd loves it. its crowd participation. And, I, you know, it's very difficult to get it right 100%, especially with those last frames of those cameras. Did it hit the ground? Did it not? Did he get his fingers underneath the ball? Um, I always remember one in Australia with Michael Vaughan, and uh, that looks, it looked obviously out, but, you know, the, the last frame, you know, that they said it touched the ground. So, yes, it's, it's, it's a big improvement to me, and uh, um, I, I think it's, it's part of our, our game now. And um, it may not always be right, but I think it gets it right more times than possibly uh, we got it in the past. And uh, players can can have a uh, a look at it again, and the crowd can get involved. So yeah, for all those reasons, I like it. Fabulous. Um, thank you. And oh, right, Peter. I think Peter West is now able to ask his question. If not, I can read Peter's question out. So just, bear, just let me just find it in the chat. Hang on a sec. Okay, so uh, Peter said, um, Warwickshire played at grounds such as Griffin Cotton at Nuneaton, the Courtauld's ground at Coventry. Um, do you regret that all matches are now played at Edgbaston? Yeah. Um, it was always a, a, a sort of uh, bone of contention. Is when we took cricket in, into the uh, into, into the outfield, so to speak, into the uh, other parts of the county. And uh, I, I, it was quite nice to go and play at uh, those sort of grounds occasionally. I think that you know you have a big ground there, and um, um, it's um, keeps a lot of money to keep it going and everything. I, I just think that. Uh, um, it's a great ground to play at, but uh, we, we should be we should be playing all our matches there, and uh, um, it's Edgbaston. But I do, you know, I understand. I think in the second teams we do play around the county, and that's good in as much that we we can get out into the counties and talk to people about Warwickshire and uh, and uh, uh, play, play on on their grounds, and that and that and that's good. But I think for the first team. It's important. I, I mean, I remember we, we put Hampshire at Stratford once. I mean, it's a beautiful ground, Stratford upon Avon, and uh, 
Uh, it is lovely to play at these these grounds. I said that Worcester was one of my one of my favourites, and it, it was um, on a nice sunny afternoon. But we play, played at Stratford, and uh, um, the facilities were n not as good, obviously, as they are at Hedgebuston. And, uh, and Shane Warren was captain of Hampshire, and he was not impressed at all. And I always got on quite well. I didn't play against it, but I always got on quite well with, with, with Shane Warren. And he said, Dennis, this, you couldn't have brought, like, why did you bring us here? <laughs> and uh, that, that was his attitude. But I mean, it's such a lovely ground. And, and uh, but they, you know, they'd rather have been playing at, the, at, at a test match ground. And uh, um, so we didn't get that right for them, but we won. Warwickshire won. And we got it right for Warwickshire. Away we went. <laughs> Fabulous. Um, and I think Steve had a question. Steve, do you want to unmeet yourself? Sure. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I'd like to go to the 1975 World Cup, the game against India, uh, where you, Dennis, scored, I think, 130-something. And Sanil Gavaska responded with 36 not out in 60 overs. I'd like your thoughts on that innings, if I may. <laughs> Not the 139, not on the 36, not that by well, sure. Well, it's just such a bizarre <laughs> innings. <laughs> it was, it was, you're quite right. Yeah, and uh, we couldn't understand it either. Uh, we, we just thought he wanted some batting practice for the test matches afterwards, I, I suppose. But uh, he obviously thought he couldn't get them. And he was a fantastic player. And he, he uh, you know, I think he'd have been good at IPL as, as well because Suno could hit the ball when he wanted to, but he chose not to that day for some for some reason. And uh, yeah, it was just uh, um, bizarre. Okay, thank you, thanks, Steve. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, so I've got David Cranmer. David, can you ask your question, please? Uh, yes. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Dennis. Thank you very much for a very entertaining talk. Um, we mentioned, or you mentioned earlier, going on the Rebel Packer tour in the late seventies. We didn't touch on the Rebel tour to South Africa in 1982, which of course had much greater significance because of the politics involved. So I just wondered what the circumstances were that led up to you going on that tour, what the tour was like and the ramifications for you afterwards. Yeah, 1982, I, I think, was, 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 was quite different. Much shorter tour, wasn't it, than, than, than uh, World Series cricket. But um, uh, quite a few of us have been over there coaching. We got to know the country really well. And, uh, uh, and I'd been at, uh, I'd had two or three jobs at different schools over in South Africa uh, during those winter months, like par party of your apprenticeship, I suppose. Um, and I, I loved the country. And, um, you know, we, we, we felt that we ought to go and play cricket there and help the country. And we went out there. And we did. We went out to schools and uh, uh, in, in the outlying uh, districts and areas and, and, and coach cricket and try to. Uh, I think I think we, we, we did help. But obviously it was uh, because of apartheid and everything. It was seen to be a rebel tour. But uh, well, we had boycott there. We had Gucci in the end. Uh, we didn't know who to make captain. But uh, Gucci, Gucci was the one that. Uh, that uh, um, took it, and I think that uh, he, he was he was really good at uh, keeping us all together. And uh, uh, we we had some uh, some fantastic times there. We played some great cricket. And as I say, we we just we felt felt we went into all sorts of schools in the areas where we were, and we thought we you know we helped we helped cricket in the country. Thank you very much. Um, and I think we'll have one more one last question, and then we'll go to the vote of thanks. So. Bob Baker, can you ask your question, please, Bob? Good afternoon, Dennis. Thank you. Thank you very much for a very interesting talk. Would Jeff Boycott's mother-in-law have taken the catch Ben Stokes put down yesterday? <laughs> oh, Jeff, Jeffrey would have thought so. <laughs> but seriously, was Boycott the best opener you, you ever played with? I think he, I think his record his record probably proves that. Um, um, for me, I played a lot with John Jameson at Warwickshire, and uh, um, but John didn't play so much international cricket. Obviously, Jeffrey did it over a long period of international cricket, and uh, and and uh, uh, did did uh, magnificently. Um, and it's been great, great, great with the game. I mean, everybody loves to listen to Fari, doesn't he? Because uh, you know he, he 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 gets stuck into people, and he'll always give you the opposite the opposite side of things. So. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, um, 
John Jameson was 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 wonderful to to, to bet with for, for Warwickshire, but um, 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 Jeffrey Jeffrey was uh, he did it at the top level over a very long period and uh, had a magnificent career. Fabulous, thank you, thank you so much. And uh, I'm going to ask Bill Allen, our fil another of our former chair, to uh, to propose the vote of thanks. Thank you very much, Nick, and thank you, D Dennis, for for an excellent talk. Um, our late president, Christopher Martin Jenkins, in World Cricketers, his book, describes you as a calm, determined, disciplined and cautious batsman with a glorious cover drive. <laughs> and I remember you well playing some of those cover drives and also the days when you moved that back to playing back and across, as you've told us, against the West Indies to cope with those fast bowling. A career brought up on county cricket, and many of us despair at the current neglect and marginalisation of the county game. How do young cricketers properly learn the game on a diet of tip and run and six sitting? Dennis, thank you for your excellent talk and insights. It's nice to have a, a speaker so knowledgeable. Oh, and born only three months after me. 